阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿。弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。呃 ，respectful 啊，体验是 respectful 啊、um, ，audience 啊、uh, ，in front of screen、uh,。呃 ，thank you for、uh, attending this、um, practice sessions of the treatise on response and retributions、um,。Today we will、uh, resume our session from、uh, last fortnight on the crimes and offences,、uh, section three of the Taishang Ganyin Pian. This section、uh, is about the、um, trespassing that might be occurred during our daily conduct, and it focus on the heart and mind, the thoughts, because thought is the source of all. Conducts a source of our conduct, source of our、uh, speech. You know, we, without thought, we don't we don't say it much, right? So obviously, we still need to use our thought in our daily encounters. But、um, to use it properly in accordance to the path,、uh, so that we can avoid the、um, karma, negative karma or negative result consequences that would be fall upon us if we commit it. So that's the whole、um, rationale of this、uh, session. So, first sentence.、Uh, we have talk talk about the first sentence briefly. First and second one, as seen in the、um, screenshot.、Uh, please inform me, Auntie, and if it's too small.、Um, the first one summarizes the whole thing, because behind there are hundreds and hundreds of、um, uh, sections to talk about.、Um, so. This one is a samurai. So this one is about you know it, it may seem like a common sense. It says disregard one's conscience, uh, to do you know vicious thoughts. They don't even say things. They haven't done vicious things. Thoughts, even that is, itself is already、um, a breach、uh, and would、uh, be attractive to the negative karma to us. And then acting contrary to what is fair and reasonable, you know.、Um, This is more on the action. First one is about the thoughts that are against the,、um, you know, against your own conscience. What is right, and th- the second one is follow through that、uh, thoughts, the vicious thoughts. You act against what is fair and reasonable. So this is a natural progression. So、um, think about our minds like a monkey. You know, we always have a word called monkey mind, jumping around and, you know, always wanting to see something, catch something, play something. You know, be curious about stuff.、Um, a lot of us,、uh, in the worldly eyes, it might be、uh, how to say a great thing. You know, it opens up invention, discoveries, and all that. But in terms of the cultivations of oneself, if you want to really achieve,、uh, how to say, balance. Uh, achieve our、uh, how to say control over our self, self、uh, full self awareness. We need to give it a bit of a boundaries. Otherwise,、um, if it's benevolent, it might be you know just a harmless prank and stuff. But if you let that mind go wild,、uh, small harm will be mental health or anything like you know you overthinking and things get worse, spiraling out of control.、Um, The the word the the worst part I mean the. But the worst case might be you might harm other people as well if you're allowing this、uh, wandering mind because you don't know what kind of condition you encounter. This is not pure land, as in in the practical sense. Like, this is not our current situation is not what we see, what we hear, what we what we hear in our mind, what we see in our in our world is not hundred percent pure. It's not a.、Uh, this is a Sahara world. So what what we see is that any condition might turn our life in that trajectory that we don't want or we never thought we would walk onto. So think of it, our mind as a monkey, like a monkey, and 
what is conscience and what is fair and reasonable is like the ropes that lash onto the wild horse or the, um, let's say maybe um, ropes that uh, carries us when we hang from the cliff, something like that prevents us from falling. So if a wild horse will not uh, put on leash and put on you know control, it will run amok and uh, how to say uncontrollably, uh, smash something along its way or something. So having a conscience, having what is fair and reasonable allows us to have uh, a framework to work on and it helps us to build our um, merits and fortunes. That's where it comes from. Uh, having constraints, having uh, appropriate amount of constraint. Obviously, we can relax and we can be ourselves. Um, but the point is, everything has has a boundary. Has a, I say, everything has its uh, bottom line. And if we do things without bottom line, we end up hurting people because we do not think of the consequences. So this is basically what it is: from thoughts to actions, the natural progressions. So this one sums up everything. So everything that is against conscience. Uh, they are considered crimes and offenses in comic way. And acting upon these um, vicious thoughts, you will, your action will be on the contrary to what is fair and reasonable. So if you move on to the second sentence, So first one is to boost one evil as strength. I mentioned it last time, a lot of misunderstanding of strength. You know, might is right. While it may stand true for still in this world, it might stand true in terms of military, in terms of you know, um, you know, monopoly, monopoly of violence. I use a very academic term in politics. Uh, monopoly of violence means only police and government can have the access to its, uh, you know, inflicting uh, necessary force to enforce the law and order. That's the part. The uh, you know, that's the academic term for it but what what we want to say about this is more on the personal conduct the the society mindset the mindset of the individuals and society if we uh if a person use uh, one's uh, how to say un wrongdoing as a sign of strength for example maybe using tactics maybe using underhand underhanded tactics uh, to gain something from others at the expense of theirs uh, their well-being or their, you know, their position or anything, um, that is considered evil. And obviously, you need to be smart enough to do that. And people might thought this is what we call capability. So there is a lot of uh, twisting of narratives. You know, someone who can speak very well, eloquent in their speech, very sharp wit, they can twist the narrative in their favors instead of it is what it is. Because sometimes the reality can be very straightforward. It does not you know, necessarily have so much layer of overthinking on it. But because we have different perceptions, we add a lot of colors to it, it might be easily misled if um, malicious intent was added to it. Um, and also, uh, you know, what is capability? In, Ch and in, 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 uh, in Chinese, this is also mean capability, strength, capability. You know, doing something on the uh, against your conscience and fair and reasonable as a sign of capability. As you can see easily from mafias, from the, um, those are obvious ones, um, from the school bullies, uh, in a sense, you know, the popular guys, you know, it doesn't have to be physical bully, you can f be verbally bully, uh, humiliate, something like that, you know, using influence, using um, whatever you have at hand that um, to cost a, a effect on other people that harms them mentally or physically. So, and, you know, like this kind of mindset is still there and, you know, um, and, and the reason it's still there is because uh, lacking of the proper understanding on consequences, cause and effect. Even though I may sound like a broken tape machine at this stage, keep talking about consequences, cause and effect. Uh, trust me, Master Ching has been doing that 60 years and a lot of the ancient people, uh, the good people, you know, sage, they've been talking about this forever. It may sound, you know, same old narrative, but the reason is, it is like that. That <laughs> That's the reality. You know, we can't, we can't describe it any more than what we could see. You know, karma is something is, um, very intimate as a shadow is to your body. It, it's very close to you because it's caused by you. Without um, 
uh, without how to say understanding to this, we will succumb easily towards this kind of um, actions because you know uh, we live in a society, and if the whole direction of the society is going towards you know an, uh, unkind, um, a very selfish, or very um, uh, lack of sense of communities, then it will you know. It, it will it will gradually grow on towards uh, move towards a polarized or conflicts. So, if we don't go in too far, uh, this is also this is the epit- I mean, this is the this is the effect of having uh, you know your monkey might run run about. It's a very uh, negative effect. Uh, one of the case, and the last one is the inflict cruelties with cold heart. This can be particularly applies when it comes to animals. Um, you know, when it comes to you know what we eat on the table, like we talk about vegetarianism and stuff like that. Why, you know, because human we um, in in current society we don't have to hunt to survive, and we have means to make uh, more food for more peoples. And obviously, the real world, you know, there's, there's still distribution market issues. But the thing is that we still have we have means not to you know use this kind of um, violence against the animal in order to obtain our proteins or all that. We can just get it from the plants. Um, so this one, uh, think about, you know, the dishes, you know, that involves a lot of um, killing and boiling. For example, you know, in Chinese, there's a dish called zui, zui xia or zui pang uh, you know, the crab. They, uh, in, uh, they drunk the crab with the alcohol let it walk itself, walk itself into the into the pool of spice, and then it's all the very strong alcohol, eighty percent, ninety percent, to marinate it, and and then while it's strong, then you cook it alive into the hot pot. We don't see it as cruelty because it's a different species, but if we use the same logic that you know a human was being treated this like this, then it's very easy to understand where this is going. Um, obviously, this can go to a rapid hole if not. This topic can go down the rapid hole. You know, what if plants have life and all that? The point is, we want to reduce uh, the amount of harm towards the surroundings in order to get what we need to survive. And, you know, right now we have the means to do that. Uh, we should properly do that more. Uh, reduce as much as possible. That's That would be a more realistic way to put it. You know, if you eat three meat, three uh, meat, three meals a day, cut it down to one, or you know, take a few days off, you know, vacation from there. It's also a good way. You know, it doesn't have to be long term vegetarian. It will be good. But so, why do I say that? Because this is something we can relate. Everything we eat, right? If you talk about those criminals that you know commit homicide and all that, these are very obviously it's apprehended by the laws. It's wrong. It's common sense. So there's nothing much to talk about. But if we talk about food, what's on our table today? Now that's that's a that's something that's very relevant to us. So you know, to have a heart, um, the whole point is to have a compassion mind, like as much as you could in your current conditions. Now, if you really live in a society where you really have the hunt to survive, then you will do what you can to minimize the harm. You know, to reduce to um, prevent yourself to hunt for sport. Obviously, if you're already in that level, then there's no choice. But in this um, exalted one, look at it. it's a Taoist book. It's not even a Buddhist book. They don't uh, yet. They, it, all the sages they always promote for you know, reducing harm. Do no harm. Actually, do no harm towards others. Uh, and this is one of the number one virtues, which is compassion. Without compassion, all the you know, techniques or the smart wits or the, you know, uh, high cultivation that you attain is just empty without a soul. Uh, and if even worse, if it was harboring vicious thoughts with such a high capability, you can create something like nuclear, uh, something, something that can destroy the whole human civilization. So it's very important to have compassion. And this is what this chapter is about. Secretly plotting to hurt the good and kind being maliciously dishonest to one's superiors and parents behind their back. So plotting to hurt the good and kind. Why? How do you uh, define someone good and kind? Someone who is contributing to the society. Someone who actually is having a positive effect on that community. 
uh, you know, in a village, the person who is, you know, helping a lot of um, constructions of the village, maintenance of the village or helping the, you know, elderly and all that, taking care of them. These are good people. These are kind people. We can all know that we all know that we can see some of these people in our lives or on the news. So these people have a, um, think of them like a purifiers of our society. It, it brings a piece of uh, a peace of mind in our society, knowing that these people are still there, out there, and inspire more people to follow. So they have a, such a unifying effect in our society, no matter what kind of society it is. Um, so these people are ought to be respected, ought to be supported, ought to be protected, and ought to be um, you know emulated and you know help them to develop their you know business that is doing good to the society. So secretly plotting to do that in order to do that kind of thing. The heart, the conscience has to be clouded to a level that is very, uh, I would say, very um, It has to be very out of your mind or out of our mind in order to, to do that. Yet it happens um, for many reasons, uh, for personal gain, for short-term gain, because you know people might be stopping you from launching a project that might be beneficially money-wise, but... Um, Harmful for you know maybe the community environment, uh, dumping the chemical waste or something like that. You know, finding a loophole in the in the regulations uh, so that you can sell your product quicker, without thinking the long term effect on the residents. Uh, if they are use your product, say uh, agricultural products, pesticides, something like that. Um, what would that do to your uh, to the communities? Um, so these are kind of you know, things that might happen. Or, um, you know, like, this is, a, this is always, this is, a, this is about humanity, like human's heart. Like, uh, we always have two sides, isn't it? We have, uh, when there's light, there's shadows. That when there's good, there's bad. Um, we always have that, um, the good part, the good part that we want to help others. We always have a part where it's very selfish or very dark, um, and it's our job to put ourselves um, as objectively as we can to, you know, uh, not to get um, too indulgent into this act. Um, it, it takes a, a while to master it. It takes a while to master yourself. Obviously, to, to go to this level, it, it had to be really like clouded. Your judgment has to be really bad in order for that to happen. But, you know... We never know what will happen behind the scene, and you know, sometimes um, it's hard to discern from good and bad. As you can see from Liao Fan, uh, what appears to be good in the society makes it, um, you know, like uh, if you're being respectful, being nice, that means you're good people, not necessary, right? You have to be what's inside your heart, what's your intention, what are you truly trying to do? If you really want to help people, sometimes some people need to waking up. So you might, you know, raise your voice a bit to wake them up. And if they can take it, and uh, their life changed since then. Or their trajectory might move towards the better part, not falling down. So these are you know, just the te techniques uh, employed to help them. So same goes to here. And person who have to do this, either they, they do not know they are good or kind. Their value has been um, very different or very uh, new chi, very twisted uh, from the common value of society in order, to do, in order to do that. Or the selfishness has clouded everything, including their innate goodness. You know, selfish for money, you're in position of power, you're in position of uh, wealth, position of strength, and you're trying to achieve your own in ends, means, and then... You know, in, in in this way, you sacrifice people for it, or you um, do that at the expense of those people who are actually uh, trying to serve the community in the organization. It happens a lot. Um, you know, in Chinese history, the UFA is very famous. Uh, Mr. General UFA, who's you know almost you know Mongolian Genghis Khan. Everyone was like, oh, hey. the whole world was like Mongolian. That is the guy who can actually push them back to their Mongolian border or at least north of China because they were in south of China, southern Song. And this is the guy who actually had the means and the wits and the capability to at least defend 
the existing border against the Mongolian incursion. But because of political gains from both the internal court of the, the ancient China at that time and the Mongolians, so they all like collaborate and push him up as the um, black sheep sacrifice. They put him, give him a false name and you know, give him a death penalty, an unjust death penalty against what is fair and reasonable. Hence, he was, you know, being still, until now, until today, we still, you know, have a shrine memorial to him because he symbolizes what is fair and reasonable, what is right. And despite his demise, his um, example has left uh, with everyone. Uh, I, th I believe it will go beyond just the Chinese people as well. Because good people does not have race or any skin. Uh, it does not have that criteria. It's just good. They're doing f good for their people. Uh, so obviously, um, this happens a lot in uh, histories and he's the famous example. There are many more examples. Uh, to bring it out, it's a, it's a bit of pain in the heart, but um, what we can do is, you know, uh, promote these teachings. But these teachings are about consequences. Like, yes, you have power, you know, like unparalleled power, unparalleled influence. No one can go against you. Law cannot take you. Yes, we, we say rule of law nowadays, but think of those people who are at the top of the game, top of the society. You know, even we're trying to min, uh, minimize the gap you know, between the privileged or underprivileged. There's, this is still a society where if you're still powerful enough, you still can get away. That's the reality because it's because of karma, because you have a good karma in the past to protect you. And then the infinite life sutra already taught people who do bad, evil, who still not receiving their um, pounds, ounce of justice is because they have done a bit of uh, good in the back in the past, but they're exhausting through their fortune very quickly when they commit these evils. These are the kind of concept we need to spread and share as much as we share the scientific knowledge and all that. Because without this kind of mindset, a lot of us will jump to conclusion. We will dismiss the possibility of a world that everyone can be self-governing instead of you know, having to rely on all this high-level thinking. Uh, you know, you need some govern, government and come in. The whole point of Pure Land is everyone govern themselves. They all just listen to the teacher and the teacher give imparts, you know, the right wisdom, the right understanding. They all understanding it properly. If they don't understand, they they keep immersed into the, the right teaching and they govern themselves. There's no king, there's no kingship in Pure Land. There's no need for that because everyone's already self-conducting. Everyone's have a leash on their own monkey mind. Obviously, when you get there, you don't even have monkey mind. But the thing is, in our world, we are having a lot of monkey mind and it tends to clash if you have way too much monkey minds at one place. Uh, it can be a beautiful clash if you're lucky or it can be an ugly one, like a war or anything. So, you know, it's always important to have a common ground to build on if you want to ever survive into another century. Otherwise, you know, who knows? <laughs> because right now, all it takes is one button to destroy everyone else. That's it. You don't need anything else. One person misunderstanding the other person in the high office. All they need to is just to get that football. You know what kind of football I'm talking about. And then put in the key and press the red button. That's it. Done. Our civilization is gone. Bye. This is what um, Master Ching Kong always promoting Arnold Ton, Ton B for. Because that man is very smart and very perceptive. He's a British historian, you know, back in the early 1900s. And he's seen, he foreseen the devastating power of nuclear. And he sees that the world needs to have a common ground. And, you know, if we um, getting a bit unfamiliar with the, you know, morals and virtues, uh, at least use this as a common ground, you know, the consequentialism, the, 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 what if we don't follow it? You know, what if we don't sit together and talk about it? What is the cost? And we need to get finer than that. We can't just leave it to the higher ups in the UN. It has to be every single people to the children who just born to the uncle aunties in the streets. Only then it can be effective. And this is what we're trying to do.
obviously what we do is just a little blips but you know if everyone keep doing it in their own communities their own congregations their own um you know religious teaching that but point towards the right direction then it will work so this is how we avoid this thing happen or how we have the consensus strong enough to build a system to guard against this kind of thing from happening again you know um the right understanding of what is good and kind and also the consequences of doing things like that the underhanded tactics against these people good people and then the second half talks about your own family your own um, elders your own superiors being maliciously dishonest to one's superiors and parents so first thing we need to know what do they mean to us parents obviously means you know our family he's the one they are the one who uh, give us life in a sense you know they give us the condition to have a life um, this body and all that and superiors give us the um, superiors are piece of people we work with maybe the elders or you know whoever is um, either by rank higher than us or by age elder, older than us um, they impart wisdom to us you know it can be teachers as well they impart um understanding to us um, if they take care of you you know during your first time working you know, they are your superiors they are like parents to you in your work so by right we should probably you know repay them back with you know our gratitude you know through hard work through solid work through you know um, self-dependence you know uh, don't cause them harm don't cause them worries um, so this is what we should be doing but if you being maliciously dishonest so in a sense they edit this maliciously okay sometimes we might hide from parents because we eat too much or you know the fun uh, the, the small things obviously try to keep it open you don't have to tell everything to them but maliciously dishonest is the key here like something that are really bad plot you know obviously it's um we don't have plot we don't need to plot against parents but <laughs> To go to this level, you know, maybe you're in a very powerful family. All I can think about is, is, you know, these people who have lots of connections or lots of, the higher you get, the more complicated it gets. But in the everyday life, uh, maybe, you know, you did something bad or something, you need to be open to them. You need to say, you know, I made a mistake. Um, in Chinese, it's called anhui, you know, wuru, kujunjing, disrespect, humiliates, um, look down. You know, if you do that, imagine when you become these two person, you will, one day, or one way or another. You might not be parents; you will be superior as well, because with your age, people will come after you. That comes after you, and imagine that kind of attitude you treat your own parents, your own superiors. Next time you had to deal with your own team of subordinates or team of uh, under you, you know you have to manage a team under you. The attitude will bounce back to you karma so if you become parents your children will do the same thing you did to your own parents but this is quite, pretty much a common sense why because because mind is not something you know mind is something you trans you impart not just through talking but through your demeanors the way you treat others and people will follow you when they see you treat other people using this twisted uh, this um how to say wrong standard in that way, wrong as in against conscience, against what is fair and reasonable. Then you impart, you're teaching them already. You don't need to sit there in this classroom and tell them what is right, what is wrong. What you're doing is already showing them. So, if you don't want to be, so every time they say that, always think of it. Do I want to be maliciously dishonest too? No, I want you know an open, frank communication, a, a, a very relaxing one. I don't want something you know withholding information unnecessarily do i want someone to plotting secretly plotting to hurt me when i'm trying to do something uh I'm trying to launch a project or initiative someone to backstab me no right so don't do that to other people so use that mindset that is easier you might yeah so always think in like that and then to treat ones so this goes further you know arrogance teachers and mentors are uh, people who um it's very important in our journey. Without them, we cannot build our capabilities. We cannot give, we cannot break through our ceilings. 
we need these people and they need us as well to part, pass on their what they learn. So this is a, um, how to say, should be like parents and children, it's teachers and uh, students, mentors and disciples, uh, should be always um, have a respectful and loving relationships. Uh, to treat them with arrogance, it's only harmful to yourself. You know, there's no benefit at all. First thing is, there's a saying like the arrogance is like a mountain. All the good water cannot flow into the mountains because it's too high up. Only water will only nourish those below them. You know, the sky falls down below, nourishes the land, and then the streams flows down the creek. Um, then the streams flow down the creek towards the you know the land that uh, is lower surrounding it. That means put yourself in a lower profile, um, lower post, um, so that you know you don't get disadvantaged by your own dis- uh, arrogance. You know, it's a foolish thing to do. To be honest, if in the most base, like fundamental, profound way, no one is higher than another another person. It's just a matter of time. You know, now you're here at this peak, but you also, you know, grow old, you also wither, and then your, your capability will drop. So what you need to do is your perception, perspective is getting bigger. You will impart them to the next generation. Next people, they might be low right now, but who knows? One co- some conditions, you know, with the hard work and with the right timing, they will also rise to the top. So if you want to use a really like Machiavellian, very realist way to thinking, if you're on top and you treat people at the bottom at the time, in terms of power, in terms of knowledge, in terms of whatever you are, you know, even parents to his children, very badly, in in a in a well, by badly I didn't say don't scold, I mean badly as in really malicious towards them or neglect, neglecting their development, then what you will get is when, because whatever comes up must come down. When you go down, and the, when they come up, you get your comeuppance from what you did to them. So that's karma in a very basic way. So, yeah, to disregard one's duties or perform them with willful incompetence. Hmm. No matter how small the thing is, no matter how how um, insignificant things may seem. You know, things itself might not be big, you know, but what you do, the attitude that you impart towards others, the attitude that you left towards others, the attitude you have while doing things is very important because it carries it, it, it comes with you for the rest of your life. And if, uh, if we have this kind of attitude, you know, like, you know, these are small things, I don't care about it. I can just, you know, in, in Malaysian's case, a word is called chintai. It's just a sui sui pian pian. Oh, I'm just going to do it, you know, uh, half, half, um, half-hearted. Um, then what you're going to get is half-hearted. There's a story. Yes, story time. There's a story I heard from a um, website. They um, talk about a old carpenter working for, a, you know, a boss, a company. A bit small business, uh, construction business. This old company has been working for like a few decades, forty years, I think. And you know, the boss is trying to um, uh, he's trying to retire after working so long, because uh, he's he's growing older and he just want to go back, um, have a retirement. And his boss, um, before letting him go, you know, after his, um, handing up his resignation, he say, "Could you do one more?" Deals. Could you do one more uh, project for me to build a house from scratch before you go? Obviously, he already planned to retire, and he felt it was such a nuisance. You know, why didn't you let, just let me go? And so he do it half-heartedly. You know, the wood he cuts. He usually before then he he was a very professional person. He will always check the quality of the woods, whether it will support the beams and all that. He will um, always measure properly before he do that. He will you know make sure the material is right. Now he neglected them, all of them. He just wanted to get this done and get out. That was his such as is such is his mindset at the time for his last job. So what he did is he do everything half heartedly. And when he finished building a house, you know, it still stands, obviously, 
but it's a uh, very uh, low inferior inf- uh, inferior quality. It's of inferior quality. It's not, um, you know, as good as he usually make before. So before he left, the boss say, "Congratulations, this house is yours," and and he was stricken with regrets and shame and you know all that sort of um, emotions of self blame because of his um, because one slip of his mind, you know, like I said, the first word, one slip of his mind, um, that he didn't do things, you know, properly, no matter. What timing is this? You know, even if it's your last job, you still want to do it until you, to the best you could be. So he didn't do that, and he was regretting it obviously because this is actually a very nice gift the boss wanted to give him, give him a home. You know, all the materials was on the company, so basically he doesn't have to pay a dime. He just need to put in his expertise, which he has already been, you know, honing for forty years. And what did that lead him to? A half hours, sorry, <clears throat> half hearted half-hearted built house so he uh, lived the rest of his life with regrets afterwards so this 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 story is you know tells us you know like everything you do comes back to you you know like a shadow to your body don't just because at the time it might seem annoying or you know your emotions might not you know be in the right place but you must have a have a higher level on of conduct of of guide uh, in your side your mind, that's cultivation. You know, have a ruler that can never change, no matter how you feel that time, what the, what your condition is, and that must always fulfill conscience and fair and reasonable. You know, even if it's your last job, even the boss still didn't let you go. You still do do it properly, and obviously you can you know you can leave when it's your when your, when it's your time. Do it properly. Whatever is at hand with you, so that you do not live with regrets, even though it's not meant for you or anything. It's just who you are and attitude. You know, it it leaves your scent behind. A person, what kind of person do you want to be? You know, um, and this is why you know this is all about you know don't what kind of person we don't want to be, and if we go um, reflect on that, then we will reduce the chances of. You know, the slip ups like that carpenter did. All the forty years of skills he you know, could have, you know, maintained that professional attitude to his job the best he can until the very last day of his day and live with uh, you know with no regrets, right? Um yes, we cannot live without regrets, but please I mean no one wants regrets, you know, if they can choose it. So do the best we can so we can live without regrets. So this one Going back to here to disregard one's duty and perform is, um, you know, I think that story is quite um, fitting for this one. Um, do the best. In, in Buddhism, there's a saying, a, to give your best, to give your all is a merit by itself. You know, it may not end up very well, but if you already give it your all to your best of your capabilities, then it's good. Mm. If you are very talented and but you do things half hearted, then no. Yeah. So, yeah. So right now we continue on the first part. This is actually the first part. First part is about um, thoughts, you know. How do we um, have a right attitude towards matters? And those are the attitudes that is considered as bringing negative consequences to ourselves, of harm to yourself and others. This all looks like harming others, but it will come back to you. There's a lot of story of that. I can enrich it the more I say it. 皇珠无事,帮助同学 To lie to and to mislead those without expertise or knowledge while holding advantage in know-how and information. Slander one's... Cl- um, so that's the first half. So a person, person with, uh, you know, in charge of information, a person with privilege of information should use that to help um, whoever does not know, whoever is in the dark, you know, uh, to guide them out of their... Uh, predicaments or to better their life. Um, if we withhold them back, you know, as a sort of like a bargaining chips or something like that, then depends. Like if this expertise and knowledge is supposed to be helping people, like Master Chinko mentioned about the sutra. Obviously, Buddhism is a idea. It's um, 
have a very strong um, code of ethics on this. All the sutras cannot be sold, cannot be copyrighted. It's meant for everyone. There's no copyright on this. You cannot copyright this. Please. All this, sorry, all this small monetary gain for that big karmic consequences in the end, it's just not worth it. You just because you can't see it, because it happens after you die. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. You know, you know the karmic the karma of giving gives you the wealth. The karma of giving of knowledge gives you the wisdom. The karma of withholding. So using that logic, the karma of withholding the knowledge, you know, unnecessarily. What would what would the consequences be? Um, you become a foolish person or a, a stupid person. Oh, that's the ignorance. You know the karma, the, the consequences of ignorance. You know, if no one wants to be ignorant, everyone wants to be smart. Everyone wants to be, you know, fully aware and understand. Uh, you no, know, like they don't want to get um, trapped in of the ignorance. So everyone wants to be aware. You know, so. Do not mislead. Do not withheld. What you have, give it all. You know, some people may use that to, you know, further their ends, or may use that to um, sell it or something like that. It's up to them. Don't care. You know, what you do now is, if these things are helpful towards societies, you know, those knowledge, those attitudes, or those little tactics, techniques you have in your work that makes your work better. Those small things, you know. I'm not talking about some big secret, how to make it clear. I'm talking about like a simple thing like this, you know, how to make your work more efficient. Um, share it. There are cases where my friends have people like withhelding information, thinking they lose their job if they share it. But we, this is, this is the matter of how wide is your perspective? How far is your perspective? How far can you see? How wide can you see? You know, if you're just thinking of it in terms of right now, oh no, if I give you that, I lost my job or they don't need me anymore. Then, um, yes, it, ha- it it seems so. But imagine if you are a person who wants to grow their knowledge, who wants to get better at what they're doing. What good would that do for you if you close the door towards ideas that might grow, you know, your know, capabilities, right? It can, only, it can only grow when you open up and let everyone talk, contribute. Because everyone has such a different perspective at the same thing, they might give you something new and then you might grow on top of it. So that's the natural course of action when you open up and share the knowledge with each other. Yes, there are some knowledge that should be withheld because it's harm for the society. For example, Zhuge Liang. He is a um, famous, brilliant strategian in the Three Kingdoms period of China. That was after the Han Dynasty. Actually, Han Dynasty is still there, but in names. Um, I think every, you know, a lot of people might play the game Three Kingdoms, but there's an actual history of Three Kingdoms, and he's one of the Han, you know, the kingdoms that claim the 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 right succession on the Han Dynasty. So he's part of that, Shu Han. So Mr. Zhu, Mr. Zhuge, no, Mr. Zhuge is a very smart person. You know, he can, uh, he's a brilliant strategist, he's a brilliant inventor, he invent a mechanical, obviously it's mechanical, not battery, mechanical um, mew. Yeah, how to say it? Mew, made of wood, using gears and cocks of that. I think so. I think so. Not in our modern way. Maybe it's a blockish. Either way, it's, it's using this kind of a mechanical principles, imparting you know, gear, uh, one to another to detail. Sorry. So that is to help him to you know logistically move a lot of um, heavy equipments, food, you know, for the army across a long distance. Obviously, it's very slow, but it's better than you know by animals which you have to feed, you know, take some of the grain and feed them, or by human power, which is even, they are not that strong, right? They need a lot of people to carry one thing. So he could make that back in, what, 1,000? Or even longer, 1,500 years ago. This man, if he was using that kind of a mindset we have right now in terms of scientific technology, just unfettered grow on 
on this, then we might carry forward this scientific revolution 1,000 years earlier. There's a saying, okay? Obviously, there's no if in history. But apparently, he did has a, he has a lot of blueprint. I'm just trying to show the example that those are not mislead. Those are withholding knowledge with a beneficial purpose, benevolent purpose. He burned all that blueprint. He might sound uh, counter counterintuitive to our modern mindset. You know, we have this. You know, in US, obviously, particularly they have this whole Massachusetts MIT, and they have this whole military industrial complex where they keep building more efficient way to kill more people at one second. And that's why he's trying to prevent that from happening. You know, just let's stop that at arrows and bows and swords. You know, you can only kill one people at a time with a sword. But one press of button and you can kill millions, billions right now. Hey, and actually it's necessary to withhold the information. By all means, he might, you know, he has that mean to go that level. Think about Buddha. He can even tell you how atomic particle works. He can use our, you know, what we have right now, the scientists took 400 years. He just sit there and say, yep, this is how we do it. You want to blueprint how to make the missile? Here you go. He can. Yes, he can. Because think of the person who has no scientific equipment at the time can talk about bacteria in a glass of water. Obviously, the way he say it has to be making sense to the ancient people. Um, so he can do that by all means. Bodhisattvas, you know, all the jus, all the all the enlightened, uh, great masters, they can tell you that. Because time is not a problem for them. Without going too far, what I'm trying to say is it's very dangerous for someone without compassion and wisdom to have this information. So over here is about just everyday thing, you know, in your job, you know, in, in your own view. It's already well known to people. Maybe there are some um, skills that you can improve yourself and your colleagues' productivity, help them to better their work life or in outside, you know, teach them to cook. Uh, in the volunteering settings, teach them, you know, whatever skills you have to help the temple um, run better. Those things we need to share, obviously, without any hesitation. As a, like what we're doing right now, we're sharing. Those things are helping you in long run because when you share things with others, you're talking to yourself one, one more time, whether with voice or with the, the mind. You have to repeat again. There's a whole point of us doing sutra reading, doing this kind of talk. Master Ching Kong say, all these years of talking, I'm not talking to anyone, I'm talking to myself. In a way, he just say like, the most important person I'm talking to is myself. I'm talking this sutra to myself. Everyone down there is a teacher. Everyone in, the, in front of the screen, in front of the, it, me is teacher. I'm the only student in all that. All in, in this whole, whole thing. You know, he thinks like that. I genuinely think he thinks like that. And we should all think like that. Teachers can come in many ways. They can come in a positive way. They can come in a negative way. And with that kind of mindset, nothing can stop you. Nothing can crush you. Mental health would not be a thing or it would not be of concern because you have such a resilient mindset. Those things need to be built just like you build your muscle. You need to build that resilient mindset. Same thing. So going back to here, um, only person who can do that is when they think they will gain anything out of it. You know, we can think about like spies, espionage, what is nice for CIA and all that counterintelligence. Those, you know, those are like affairs of the state. Okay, we understand that that happens, but in the everyday life, we should not withhold anything. To slander one colleague and fellow student, this is very easy. <laughs> it has to happen. It might happen. We might do it ourselves sometimes. You know, maybe not maliciously stand there. We might um, say, uh, this person is doing what, what, what. Maybe you don't know what they're doing. You know, what appears to be, you know, something not right. You might not have the full understanding. So the best thing as a person who knows these teachings, us, or who wants to prevent creating more trouble to ourselves, to our already uh, troublesome world, is two things. If you know that person and you kind of know that person is doing something wrong, then you just talk to them, you know, directly or indirectly. It depends on your relationship with that person. 
if you can't, then nothing you say, nothing you do would help because stranger or something, keep it quiet. The only time you say it is when it harms other people. Maybe he has a gun trying to shoot. Or, yeah, sorry guys, I know. That's insensitive of me. But maybe he has a, when maybe he has a knife trying to stab. Or something extreme like that. That's the only time you, you say, hey, stop him. That's because you're har- it's harming the public. But if it's not harmful to the public, it's like small flaws or, you know, the quirks that maybe not quite nice sitting well with other people, then be quiet. You know, there's no need for you to concern yourself um, or to self towards something that you cannot help changing. What you can help is to impart a better version of it. Maybe you do a better example. Or if, if, if chances arise, because why, why do we resort to slander? Why do I say all these things? To slander is because you thought that would, you know, a lot of people might think they're helping this group by saying, um, you know, this person is bad and this person is doing that. And in the heat of discussion, humans are not fully rational. Right? We follow the, we follow the, what, is, what is hot on the YouTube, what is hot on IG at the moment, what is hot on the news at the moment. And then we just chow, in Chinese word, stir fry. We stir fry everything up and we make it even more, more spicy, more tasty by adding our versions of it. This is how it goes. You don't need fact checking. You don't need scientific proof. All you need is someone twist the narrative a bit and that person supports that narrative and then more narrative add onto it to make it a full-blown visual novel or light novel of that version, of that real person. And that's all you take to cause this uh, discord within the, uh, this, um, this accord within the, I mean, to, to, to cause, you know, bickering among the people in an organization, a family, a country. That's it. So, so, my, what might begin as a good intention sometimes, or might be, you know, malicious, that is other case, but most of the time, we might unknowingly doing that, thinking we might help. Unless it's a one-to-one or it's a close group where this person is in a position that's very important. It will affect your group, you know, how it runs. Then you got to tell them that, you know, that what you're doing now is counterproductive towards what we're trying to do. That's in business settings. Or in, in family, obviously, it's different. It's You can't do that. You, you do it the family way, you know. Have a beer and talk about that. What I'm trying to say is, try to avoid. Take it in the public. It will do you and do that person no good. It will do your group no good. Mm. Either you advise it one to one behind the scene. That's the right way to do it. Or if you try and nothing's happening, keep quiet. See how it goes. Things change, right? It's impermanent world. People's attitude change time to time. When there's a right, there will be a right opportunity. Maybe that person might meet some bumps because of their negative attitude. Then you come in and help. That's wisdom, my friend. There's so many ways, but just don't bring it out in a way that will harm the, the, the harmony or harm the whole organization. No, because morale is important. What keeps people together is not just the money. Those are many important um, for a company, money and all that, those are basics, but it's actually also the morale, the people. You know, they want wanting to work together to achieve something. And family, obviously, is love. And love cannot come without um, a period of friction. Those are common because you keep seeing that person doing the same thing again and again. Obviously, you have to be like, yep, I, I gotta have to take in the quirks because I'm living with the pers- this person right now. You know, your spouse or your siblings, your parents. Those things are, um, you know, those are everyday things, you know. Just get used to it and, you know, get more open-minded. And that's how we how we do it. That's how, how we have a society that is a bit more kinder. Employing lies, fraud, espionage, plots, oh my God, sting operations, entrapment, xu, wu, zha, wei, okay. Four words in Chinese. Each of them can be a, Translate like that. So this is how efficient the ancient Chinese people and uh, encode their information. If we're using a modern Chinese term, sorry, I'm a bit off tangent. In modern modern IT terms, these are like codes, very good for coding. 
obviously you need to have a key to unlock it, understand the language and all the context. So what they do is she is what is not true. Who is you know slander? You say something that is not right. You, you um false accuse false accusation. Sa is to lie literally to to cheat to um to uh, scam. Yes, way is superficial fake. So all these thing, um, it's a big no no in in any conduct. And Xi Wu Zha Wei, this thing can the 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 way I can think about people would go to that level is because they think that's how society is. That's how the world is. That's how it. That's how you should live. Like, you know, there are people like that, which is unfortunate. This is not something we should say. You know, which trial burn them on on stakes. With our judgment and all that, it should be something that understand from the perspective of that person. That person might be in that world since they were young, or they don't have a proper the importance of example, proper example to 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 show them how being honest is actually simpler, good for your heart, than doing all that espionage and all that stuff. It's it's detrimental to your heart. Especially your mind, heart, you know, mental health. Gong Ji Zhong Qing, yeah. Your own family members. How do you slander and criticize your own family members? As a family, should be united against issues at hand rather than, you know, backstepping one another in the back. You know, why? Why would? Why would? Why would anyone want that? Right, and. If we think like that right now, rationally, none of them make sense. But it happens in our society; otherwise, it won't be here. <laughs> and and it keeps happening. It will worst. Um, you know, more people putting up more act, more faced, more more double face, double mask. It's an act of protection, or they think they can gain something out of that. Um, they think you know they want to maintain a perfect image. There's nothing such as perfect image. We we're past that point. We don't worship a tree or something just because uh, we 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 make it into like a godly de- deity beings. We're in the age where we we actually understand their flaws and understanding, and you know, it's make it even more human and more relatable like that. You know, we don't expect a perfect beings. Uh, even Buddha, when he appears in our world, he don't appear. He don't appear perfect to us. Obviously, when you attain enlightenment, you see him in his full potential. Yes, but as a normal people, what we see him is what we see in ourselves. You know, like a normal elderly man, very wise and very kind. So as we improve our cultivation, our way of seeing the world get better. The world getting more, um, more like pure land, closer to pure land. You know. So this is all, all about perspective. So right now, going back to this one, is the perspective of you know having to go through all these um, tactics and all that, you know, just to get something, just to get sympathy, get attention, or get money, or get um, power, uh, or get revenge. Um, obviously, there are you know government agency that do that, um, spies and all that. Those are Affairs of states, like I say, or put it on one side. Uh, the whole point is about human, you know. If um, everyone, like I say, can self-control, self-teaching, self-improve themselves, there's no need for this affair of state. There's no need for government. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about utopian world now. Um, but yes, this is how pure it is. Everyone self-governing themselves. There's no need for someone to give you a law because you're already in accord to the law of karma. Law of karma is higher than law of Human, because law of human have all these codes that are good, like this is way. But if you really want to get to the depth of it, you need to understand karma. Naturally, you won't dare to do this because you already know how bad things will go if you do it. Why would you want to break the law if you understand you might, you know, get ten times the the consequences from that? And why would I want to steal people if I'm gonna lose what I have in the first place? If I steal one billion, I'm supposed to have ten billion in my account. In my coming account right now, I only have five million. Why would I want to do that? There's no like 
we fighting like that, there's no need to steal. No one will we want to steal. They will all be busy helping each other. Or they will be at ease with what they have and improve their level of state of mind. So I'm saying like this thing reflects to us like why this keep happening because this is how we see the world and how we think the world is and then we keep adding to adding fuel to that half. But understand what Buddha say. All phenomena are illusory. Like a dew, like a shadow, we should look like that. So all these things is like what you see in the movies. All the dramas, all the tears in the end of the day. Yeah. So it all comes back to the silence. Quietness. All this movie in this screen, once you turn this off, it's all silence. So going back to this, to do that, yeah, so I'm saying. Um, and also, you know, if you understand you know, the importance of giving, because by giving, then you, there's no need to do investment in a, in a way. Like, like you do the investment, but the, the investment of karma, you invest to the all sentient beings by you know, doing volunteering and all that. Obviously, this is still based on the operation uh, mindset of gaining something back that is still not there. But that's not what Buddha is trying to tell us. What he's trying to tell us is you need to, um, how to say, salun kong. You give without thinking, you're giving. You know, you just do it like you raise your hand. Do it like you drink your water. So if they need it, just give it. I mentioned about Master donating a million dollars to the hospital in Thailand. I don't know if I say it last time. Did I say it last time, Auntie? Uh, Master Ching Kong donating the hospital, money to the hospital. Yeah. One of the sessions. Huh. Oh, okay. So, yeah, basically, just like that. He does not know how much money he has. He just sit there and people say, uh, uh, you know, as the um, vice, um, as a wife of a vice president of the nation, why do you need to sing in order to raise the fund? Um, you know, as a vice, you know, because you know, as a president or family, first family, you should probably, you know, be respected and all that. You know, why do you go out and sing like a, uh, like a salesperson, something like that. She's like, oh, I'm trying to raise a fund for a hospital in the boundaries between Myanmar and Thailand so that I can build a hospital for the sanghas, the monks. There's a lot of um, uh, ill person in the, in the monk group. So, and, um, so Master Ching Kong just, um, uh, he's just like, okay, how much do you need? And then <laughs> this, um, this, uh, uh, wife of the first family, uh, wife of the president, uh, this lady, first lady in Thailand, she just say, uh, a few million dollars, I think USD, millions, three million USD, something like that. 13 million or three million, I forgot. Um, and then it's a huge amount, you know? And then he's like, okay, let's do it. And then Master Wuxing next to him is like, uh, sir, we don't know, we don't even know we have it in our bank account. So, you know, Master Chikung looks very resolute. He wants to donate this to help the Sangha hospital. So he's, he's just a promise. And then he go out. When he finished the meeting, the audience with the first lady, and then he go out and talk to the venerables, the other students of his, and say, how much do we have in the bank account? <laughs> and and they were like, but Master Chikung has the fortune. He, 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 this is a person who knows the law of karma. Come on. Who give us commentary on this, and he exemplifies it how a person who truly understand karma operates, give without thinking, and then without thinking about it. After he finished giving, oh, he just occasionally remember, oh yeah, that hospital. What's the name? Um, okay, before that, how did he get a fund? So after he promised to pledge a few million dollars USD to this hospital constructions. And going out, asking his students, how much do we have? Um, obviously, they have connections. Everyone share that news. Master, master wants to build a hospital. So obviously, there's a lot of people with you know, um, wealth um, and support. So it takes three days for him to raise that. And he doesn't need to sing. So yeah, there you go. Um, this is called fortune. And he say that fortune, the bigger fortune you have, 
the bigger things you can do. Not even an ounce of thinking, I want to take some to put into the investment property, take some and put into that, that, that property and that property. No, he just used that and built hospital and built the, the British, you know, the University of Wales, um, Sinology College, Sinology College, Han Xueyuan, the Han Institute. So this is a person who, 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 who know how to use, who, who knows the law of karma, who able to navigate it freely uh, like that, just natural. So he just like, after a few days, he donated and then he just asked, what's the name of the hospital already? He didn't even ask the name. He didn't even care. Like, he just gave the money and said goodbye and then bye. He didn't even like interfere or demand anything in the project because usually people, when they put a lot of money in there, the normal mindset would, the, you know, the normal people mindset would be, uh, I, have, I have demand this and this, or maybe in my name, try to get something back for that investment. You know, nothing is free. But in his case, he just forget about it until a few days. He asked one of his students, uh, what's the name? Oh, uh, Ching Kong Hospital. No, no, no. Change it to San Bao Hospital. It's the, the triple gem hospital. You know, he don't want the name. And he just say in a, in a very random way, in the daily occurrence. So, San Lun Kong, guys. This is how we donate. How we give through his example. Obviously, give in your own means and Trust me, if you have that heart, the horizon, that the help will come very easily. Um, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is comparing to this kind of mindset, that mindset is like a very beautiful uh, daffodil flowers, very smooth spring wind blowing to your face, that kind of state of mind, you know, white, spacious, like the Scottish Highlands. And this kind of mindset is like the deep in the groove, you know, unseen depth of a beast, trying to plot one more layer, another layer. It's fun to watch as, as a show, but to be that person or to be in that situation, it's just terrible. You always have to guard against everyone around you. It's like you're in perpetual war against the world and society. And that's, I guess, where you get this, um, this kind of um, extreme group out of. Because they are like that. It's because... The experiences combined with lack of a right guide leads to that outcome. Everything has its cause, you know, conditions. Everything is subject to change. With right conditions, enough immersion of that right condition, it will change the cause of that person. You might be the one. I might be the one. So, yeah. Understanding this, then it's not too hard to understand why would, why would one doing that. All right, so yeah, criticize your own family members, you know, slander and criticize. This is different from constructively trying to work with each other, you know, to build a better relationship. We still need to be honest about what goes wrong, what needs to be fixed. By no means we're talking about keep your mouth quiet and don't say anything, uh, you know, you be cooped up. No one can do that. It should be an... Benevolent, very harmonious environment, or at the very least, sit down and talk about it. A lot of times it's mis misinterpretation. A lot of times it's just maybe, you know, um, that person might say something unknowingly, you know, like didn't know how uh, other people take it. 说着无心,听着有意, okay, in Chinese. People who say it without that intention, but other people take it and thought that person mean what he thought he mean. You see, even I when I say it looks like a, blood, it looks like a mess. It is a mess. Um, that's what happened with monkey minds, guys. This is why we need to cultivate meditative tranquility so that we can see each other clearly. You can't see a a, a bottom of the pond when it's all muddy up with you know muds from the bottom or rains. You can only see the mud uh, the pond clearly. It's content, it's you know color when it's at peace. That's the whole point of cultivation of Nianjing and all that to 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 you know to tidy it up. You know. So yeah. So it goes on and on. Gang Chiang Yong act with iron malice. So we already mentioned about Zheng last in last um, youth group meeting. This one in uh, I'll repeat again. So this um 
刚强不忍 ，iron malice，malice。Iron, gun, you know, iron is strong. Steel, actually, steel, same tone, um, very stern, steel, steelful determination. But it's a malice one. It's not a, not a good one. You know, it's like a knife.、Uh, can use to save people, like surgery, or can use to kill people. So this is the let, later version. Um, so. There are cases where people are stern, strict, but fair.、Uh, we can see the example of Mr. Bao Zheng. So this is a famous figure in ancient China. He's a judge,、um, court adju- uh, adjudicator, or something like that. He's、um, judge、uh, impo- appointed by the、um, the first and the only woman empress Wu Zetian. I think it was during her time. So. He's very fair, you know. He's very. He does not give you face. But every time he says something, I mean, every time, every time he meets people, he does not like, you know, um, give you a lot of courtesy and all that. He just goes straight to the point. Like like the Germans, people keep saying that Germans are very frank, but I think he's like that, very fair. And and is if you can convince him with reasons, proof and reasons, he will he will take it. He will take a feedback. And he would think think through very seriously. Those are the kind of person who are very strict, but they are fair. You understand their how they operate, their guidelines. So you you are at ease with them. You actually respect this kind of person. You know that you in the good hands. If you happen to be you know judged by him in a court case, he would make every sure everything is covered. But this is going against that. This is about someone who.、Um, Uh, stubbornly to the point that it harms himself and other people.、Um, how do we say this? Iron Man list. Can think about the histories. You know, people with that kind of Iron Man list that cost thousands of lives. We don't go into political into it.、Uh, and this kind of Man list, this kind of Iron Will is called Iron Man list.、Uh, lacking, lacking com- compassion, lacking um, uh, how to say, lacking. That level of malleability needed, too, too hard, and too stern, to a level where it 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 push forward the policy that kills a lot of people. Maybe the intention at the beginning might be good, but it turns out like that. So, proceed capriciously and obstinate to good advice. Yep, there we go. Her needs to yong. Remember, our heart is made of soft materials. The only thing that is hard is our rib cage. It's used to protect our heart. If a person cannot、um, take in the vice when it's needed, you know, where 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 it's fair and due, then that person cannot improve, and the person might keep going on the path that is harmful towards other people and himself.、Uh, in all aspects, in relationships, in career, and everything. So advice is important. Taking advice is needed.、Um, there are cases where people,、uh, when they go, you know, yi gu xing, you know, when they do things without thinking about the consequences, then、um, the, the the kind of、uh, damage they cause is、uh, ir- insurmountable, irreparable. So that's it for the first part.